bless your name, Jesus. He's worthy, amen. Amen. He's worthy of it all. And you know, sometimes we, I hate to say it, but we go so much that we tend to forget from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sand. It was all because of him. It was nothing that we did on our own, but it's what God has done for us Amen. and to us and through us. Amen? Amen. Oh, he's worthy of it all. Praise God. He's worthy of the honor, the worship. The all glory goes unto him this morning. Yes. Praise God. All glory goes unto him from infinity to infinity. Praise God. There is none like you, O oh Lord, in heaven and earth. There is none like you, God. Hallelujah. This morning, I got a I got a passage, and I'm probably going to be doing some extended reading. So if you want to read with me, I'm going to start off in 1 Kings 18 and the 16th verse. Chapter 18 and the 16th verse, praise God. Good job. 1 Kings 18, starting at verse 16. Praise God, praise God. I ask you to join with me because I don't want to do quite an injustice trying to keep up. But he's pretty good, but we're going to see what happens. <laughs> praise God. Father God, we thank you right now for the joining of the saints. We thank you, Lord God, that we came in with our minds set upon worshiping and giving you glory. Lord God, the word is second hand to you, Lord God, because you're worthy of every breath that we breathe, Lord God, for every move that we make, for every second that is in our life. Dear God, you're worthy, you're worthy, and we come in, Lord God, as worshipers unto you, God, to give you the praise that you so deserve, to give you the honor, God, that you so deserve, to bless your holy name in this house, God, because you're worthy, you're worthy of it all. Hallelujah. You know, the first song that the praise team did, I think, was I Believe, I believe For It, praise God. And the message of today is about the same thing. We're talking about believing in God. Not necessarily saying, yeah, I know who God is, but do you know who God is? And I'm probably, for some of y'all, probably preaching to the choir. But understanding that we're going to a realm of relationships where you have to know him without a doubt. That you have to know that he's God and there's no other. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So we're going to start with the New International Version, and we're going to talk about Elijah. Now, most of us know Elijah. We know that that. that on, on, on Mount Carmel, the, the, the magnificent things that God did through Elijah. But, but we're going to see Elijah in his works. But then we're going to talk about Elijah kind of like us. You know, we, we know God, we believe we got the power and anointing and, and we can do all things. But when it comes down to doing all things, Elijah was a mind man. I don't want to go ahead of myself. Let's start off reading. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. When he saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? Now, now, how many of y'all, when y'all go to witness somebody, or just to share the gospel with somebody, they give you the attitude that it's you again? Is it you again? I, do I have to listen to what you have to say? <laughs> so Elijah responds back and he says, I have not made trouble for Israel. You basically got somebody else. Now, I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family have. You have abandoned the Lord's command and have followed the Baals. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel. Now Elijah was talking trash. <laughs> he said, I'm not a troublemaker, but you are. Call the people, those who are wondering if God is God. Call them on the mountain. I have something I have to say. You know, that's a 
boldness that Elijah had because he knew God. He's seen what God has done in his life, where God has manifested through him, just like you've seen what God has done in your life and how he has manifested through you. He said, call him up on the mountain and bring, and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asher who eat at Jer Jerbel's table. Who eat at Jezebel's table, excuse me. So he said, call them up and call up your prophet, call up your boys. I got something I want to say. So 20 says, and Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets to the Mount of Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? Now that's the message for the church today. How long will you waver between two opinions? Now it reminds me of what Jesus told the disciples when he says, how long will I be with you? I've given you instructions. I've given you power and anointing. I've set you out on a path. And yet you still stumble with unbelief. He said, how long will I be with you? So, so Elijah is saying to the people, how long will you be wavering between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. He says it's just that simple. You know, in, in our times we say you can't straddle the fence. You know, one, one day you, you're a Christian and the next day you don't even know what you are, but then you fall back when you need God and then you go back to the other side when you're not sure if God is God. He said, how long are you going to continue to waver when you say you know God? He says, if, if the Lord is God, then you need to follow him. Amen. You need to serve him. You need to give him the glory because he's worthy of it all. Or if Baal is God, your idol is God, you stay with your idol. Elijah was strong in what he was saying to the people. Then he goes on and he says, but the people said nothing. The people said, you mean you don't have anything to say about God? You mean to tell me you don't know nothing about God? You, you don't have a testimony of how good God is? You say nothing? When the enemy tries to stop you, he said, the people said nothing. 22 says, then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Then he says in 23, get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves. This is a showdown right now. He said, go get two bulls, and I ain't going to touch you. You, you, you. you dress them. I'm going to paraphrase right now. You get your bull, and you do whatever you need to do. Put, put uh, what's that stuff you put on charcoal, that lighter fluid, you put lighter fluid on it. Get you some extra strength, man. You know, whatever you got to do, you get your bull, and you dress it. And so they did, and he let them cut up pieces of wood, and he let them put up, put a fire up. Uh, no, he said, put, put up the wood up under, but do not set it on fire. This is the challenge of the day. He says, I will prepare the other bull and put it on wood, but will not set it on fire. Then you, who say your God is God, this is Baal's people he's talking to, then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. Now, Elijah's saying, now look at me. I'm out here up against 450 demons because that's basically what he was saying. And I'm challenging you today that even before Christ came, Elijah had power and an anointing to call down rain from the sky. Yes. So after Christ has come and gone, he has given us power to tread upon scorpions, to call things that are not as though they are. So Elijah say, fix it, dress it, do what you will. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to let you go first. I I I'm going to let you call.
call on your God. And then I will call on the Lord, the God who answers by fire, his God. So, so you know you have those, you, you, you try to share the word of God with you, you try to tell them about the compassion of Christ and what Jesus has done on the cross, and they want to debate, is God real? But we have enough in us, enough witness of Christ in our lives that we know him, but we tend to be afraid. Okay, we tend to be afraid to face them because we think we don't have enough word to defeat them, but the word of God says that he will give you the word you need in the very same hour. I, I, I can't do that. That's, that's, that's not me. You know, I, I'm going to let so-and-so, so-and-so do it. No, don't be afraid of the demon. Because God has inside of you what is greater. Elijah said, do what you have to do. And the God that answers by fire, we're going to decide today he is God. He is the Lord God Almighty. And after that, there should be no more doubt. Then all the people says, what you say is good. You know, that's kind of preaching to the choir. Yeah, what you say is good. I, I kind of believe what you're saying, but I just don't believe that's for me. I, I understand what you're saying, but I just don't believe that's for me. Now, I, I don't know all the scriptures. I don't know all the, 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 the books of the Bible. But one thing I do know, when God says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, I'll take that to heart. Greater is he. So who is that that's in us that's greater than the world? God said, I have to go back to the Father because I'm going to send down a comforter and he's going to teach you all things. And not only is he going to teach you all things, he's going to reside inside of you. So the Holy Spirit of God rests and rules in your body, in your spirit, in your mind if you allow him to change your mind. Those things we know without a shadow of a doubt. So no, whatever comes up against us, we're not supposed to bow to Baal because we know who God is. But they said, what you say is good. But we're not totally persuaded. Hmm. You know how it is? We, we, we know what you're saying, but, but we ain't ready to give up our sin yet. We, we're not ready to give up our fear and our doubt. But, but what you say sounds good. We're just not ready to do anything about it. In 25, Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one of the bulls and prepare it first. Since there are so many of you, since there are so many of you, that's another fear, right? Since there are so many of you, but Elijah's not going to speak on about him. He says, call on the name of your God, but do not light the, light the fire. So they took the bull given to them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal for the morning till noon. And this is the one that I like. Baal, Baal, answer us. Baal. They shouted, but there was no response. No one answered. And they danced around the altar that they had made. <laughs> 27 says, at noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Uh, Elijah said, shout louder. <laughs> Maybe he can't hear you. <laughs> you know that God, you calling on that idol, you done, you done took in the place of God, keep calling on him. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's traveling. Maybe he's watching TV. You know, maybe he's on TikTok. I don't know, but keep calling him. I'm paraphrasing, y'all know that's what I mean. Anyway, so he said, maybe he's asleep and must be awakened. So they shouted even louder. And they got so afraid and, 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 and so bent out of shape, they start cutting themselves with swords and spears, as was the custom, until their blood flowed. See, they made themselves a sacrifice. They figured if I cut myself and I bleed, maybe our God, this idol God that we've been worshiping, maybe he will answer us. Cut our wrists, cut our throat, whatever. Bell, answer us, they said. But there's still no idol. But yet even to the day, we still put things in front of God 
and make them more important than him, they become our idol. But when you're in need, he's the one that you call on. They said they shot at the ladder. There was no answer. 29 says, then they passed and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time of the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Now I'm going to move back up and read this again in 20. It says, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. So down in 29, I, I, I'm assuming they're saying, our God didn't show up. We called upon him, but he didn't show up. Maybe he's not the God that we thought he was. So then in 30, then Elijah says to all the prophets, come here to me. They came to him, and he, he repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones and one of each, one of each for the tribes of the descendants of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came from, saying, Your name shall be Israel. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it and large enough to hold two sheaves of seed. Not only did he prepare the altar and he rebuilt the altar that was torn down, I guess, between their dance, and, and then he said, I'm so bad, build a trench around the altar. And I can imagine the prophets of Baal looking at him and saying, build the trench. Why does he need a trench? And he says, he arranged the wood, cut the bull into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, fill four large jars with water and pour it onto the offering and to the wood. Now, 450 people sitting here watching this man say he's going to call down fire from heaven, but he's pouring water on the offering. Now, we don't have to be a scientist to know this, but if you pour water on something, chances are the fire is not going to burn. But he said, build a trench around the altar. And then he goes on to say, and pour four large jars of water. Then 34 says, do it again. Oh, it's like saying, do it again, Lord. <laughs> he said, do it again. And he says, and then again, he says, do it a third time. Now, Elijah was bold by this time. <laughs> he had to know without a shadow of a doubt that God was going to show up. Because <laughs> not only has he wet the offering, not only has he dressed the offering, not only has he poured water on the offering, but he's done it. What? Four times now? 36 says, in the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed. Hmm. How many sometimes when you're going through something and all you know you need to do is just, just call on the name of the Lord in prayer and watch God change things. Oh, call on the name of the Lord when you're down and out and watch God change things. So it says, at the time of the sacrifice, Elijah just stepped forward and he prayed. He said, Lord, of, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God of Israel and that I am your servant and have done all things at your command. He said, let it be known today. We're going to say this today. Let it be known today that you are God and that you're working through me to get done on the earth what you need done. God, I'm here. Use me. Make me a vessel of honor that you can trust me like Elijah to stand before 450 prophets of Baal. And 37 says, answer me, Lord. Answer me. That's all he had to say. Answer me, Lord, answer me. So these people would know that you, Lord, are God. That's just how strong we need to be in God. So these people know when I come in the name of the Lord, I'm coming in the name of God. I'm coming in the name of Yahweh. That I'm not bringing the Veda, but I'm bringing the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That I can stand before them and say, it's not me. But it's God that works through me. He said, answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you are Lord, you are God. 
and that you are turning their hearts back again. That's all God was saying. He is calling out today for the lost, for the backslider, for the unsaved. He says, I'm just calling. I'm just letting you know that I am still God. But now you have to prove positive to folks sometimes to believe that God is still God. But they see God through us. In your life. Through your living. Through your giving. Through your testimony. Elijah said, they're going to see this. And they're going to know that you're God because you're going to use me. And what you're wanting to do is just to turn the hearts back to, to you. 38 goes on and says, Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burnt up the wet sacrifice. The wood was wet. It was burnt up. The stones was wet. It was burnt up. The soil around the sacrifice, it was burnt up. And also, it licked up the water in the trench. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Not only was the sacrifice on fire, but it scooped up all the water that was in the trenches. You know, we got Moses again. He parted the sea for them to know that I am God. And there is no other. And you would think, after that, you would think, after God heals your body, you would think, after God fixed your finances, you would think after God protected your children, you would think that God, that God didn't have to show you anything else, but yet in the church we're still asking God to show us who you are. I, I, I know, but I, I ain't a hundred percent yet. After all God has done in your life, you still question, is he God? You know, you're John the Baptist. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. As much as he preached about Jesus coming, and as much as he told them, come be baptized, and, and, and being on in the water and seeing the dove come down and say, this is my beloved son, and who I am well pleased. John, when he got in trouble, he said, go and ask him, are, are, are you the one, or, or do I look for another? See, Elijah said way back then, how long are you going to waver between what is right and what is wrong? How long are you going to say you're serving God, but you're really not serving God, you're testing God? How long will you waver between two opinions? Today, can we just settle it? That God is God, and there is no other. Elijah did all this magnificent work in the name of God. He did all this in the name of God. Knowing without a shadow of a doubt that God was going to answer him. But then, Elijah stood before 450 prophets of Israel. Declared that God was God. Now we're going to go to 1 Kings 19. This mighty man of God, this man that God fed, this man that God took care of, Elijah the prophet. Verse 1 and 3, I think I'm reading out of the sorry, easy read version, I believe. It says in verse 1, and Ahab told Jezebel. Ahab told Jezebel. Now, most of us in the church reference Jezebel as a woman. She can be a man or whatever. That comes in to tear up the church. Most of us, when we think about Jezebel, we think about a controlling spirit. We're thinking about someone who's coming in to tear down what God is trying to build. We're thinking of Jezebel as somebody we don't want to be acquainted to and definitely somebody we don't want to be. So, so I, I, I was wondering, I said, okay, well, what, what is Jezebel? It said Jezebel from the Old Testament, Kings 1 and 2, 
was the wife of King Ahab, the one carrying the gospel. Remember King Ahab? Oh, okay. Okay, and, and who ruled the kingdom of Israel by opposing the worship of the Hebrew God, Yahweh. Neglecting the rights and the well-being of other subjects and challenging the great prophets Elijah and Elisha. Jezebel wants to stop the worship of God. Wants to stop the Israelites from serving God. Now she had to think she was bad. So Ahab, her husband, told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, he had executed all the prophets with a sword. Now, Elijah on the Mount Carmel said, I am here alone. I am the last of the apostles of, of, of prophets of God. And, and I'm looking at 450, but there were more. And it says here that he killed them all. This powerful man of God killed 450 prophets by himself. Anyway, so it goes on and says, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. Y'all know the story. Saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So when Jezebel basically sent in her message, in her email, in her text message, she said, Elijah, I want you to know you might have killed them, but your life is in my hands. And by tomorrow night, I'm going to kill you. Now this is the woman talking to the man of God, who just had the magnificent sacrifice burn up from fire from heaven. But see, a demon don't care who you are. A demon will know if you're scared, and they'll step to you. That's why you got to know without a shadow of doubt who you are in Christ. There is no patty cake anymore in the church because the time for us to stand up and declare the things of God is now. When she said, Elijah, I'm sending you this message, I want you to know I'm coming after you. And when he saw that, he arose. And when he saw that, he arose. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. Now this is the same man that just went through the sacrifice of God, called fire from heaven, dried up water that was in a trench, killed 450 prophets. This woman sent him a message and he ran for his life. He ran for his life. Ahab told Jezebel, bringing gossip, what Elijah had done. The report came through so strong that everybody knew the magnificent thing. If I'm going too fast. I'm not going to talk about a lot of stuff right before. Okay, so if you just know that God is, we don't have to run from any demon, devil, witch, or warlock. There's no reason for us to be afraid if we have the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, living inside of us. So, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of them by tomorrow. She declared a thing. She declared that I'm coming after you. And, and the silence of Baal and the fire from Yahweh proves that, you know, she should have thought, Yahweh must be real. Because when Elijah told them that, he said, if your God does not answer you, then you're living with a false God. But if my God answers through fire, then he is real. So if Ahab told Jezebel about what happened and that Yahweh did what Elijah had said, then why is she still threatening to kill a man of God? Why didn't she believe what he said and what he said? See, it's the same thing with the people in the world and some church folks. When you try to tell them about the goodness of God and you think that they should understand and say, you know what? That God you're talking about must be real. You know, what, what king was that that said I was almost persuaded? But he didn't say he was totally persuaded. And so when the world looks at the church they ask the question, are you totally persuaded or are you wavering? Do you really know this God that you talk about? 
Jezebel said, I'm coming after you. Now, Elijah, with the power that he had to call down fire, should have called down fire on Jezebel. But instead of calling down fire, it goes on. I'm not going to bore you with the, the whole details, but it, it says that he ran and he hid in the cliff of the rock. This mighty man of God is running from a woman, and the only thing she did was send a message. But in that message, her word was powerful enough to put fear in his heart. So Elijah fell in a very important point at which he was his strongest. You know, we, we say back and forth, and I, I got to learn to, to watch my words because words are powerful. You know, I will say things like, you know, when I do something for the Lord, this, this happens, or, or when I know that I'm going to do something for the Lord, you know, the enemy comes up. I got to stop saying that. Because it doesn't matter if the enemy comes up or not. If God is God, what I do is for the glory of God. And rather the enemy comes, like Paul said, to buffet me, I need to stop giving him credit. The church needs to stop calling on the devil and calling on Satan and start calling on God. Oh, the devil did this and the devil did that. And the devil... It's not about the devil. Give God the glory of what he's doing, what he's going to do, what he's already done. Give God the glory. But this powerful man of God ran from a woman and all she did is send a note. She sent an email and he started running. But, but he was going into a journey, so two said, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no longer better than my father. You just did a miracle. Now you want to die? We come in and, and, and God does miraculous things in our body, in our lives, in our home, and then something comes up against us and now we say we want to die? What are we saying? That the Lord can't keep us? This man says, I, I want to die. He prayed that he might die. The mighty man of prayer, the mighty enough to make the rain and the dew drop stop for three years, three and a half years. And then mighty enough to make it start in prayer. He had enough power in his word to stop the rain. Had enough power and faith to start it back up again. But now the same man is praying that he died because he's afraid. The enemy has frightened him to the point that he wants to give up. Now is Elijah the only one that wants to give up? When the battle gets too hard? When things get too hard, when things don't want to ain't looking right, when, when, the, when the enemy comes up against us, we're ready to give up on God and run. After all he has put inside of us, he said, just, just let me die. You know, he was like, Lord, the work is too stressful. That's for the preachers. Exhausting. It seemed to accomplish nothing. What? God, word you saying it accomplished nothing? Are you not sitting here today? Did God not change your life? Are you the same person you was five years, ten years, fifteen years ago? Has God not healed your body, delivered your children, saved you from, a, from the, the world that shot to kill you? Has God not done something? You said God's word has done nothing? Did God's word not bring Jesus so that he could get on the cross for you and I? That our sins will be forgiven and that we will have eternal life? He said nothing? That anything God did for him on the Mount of Carmel was nothing? He just wanted to give up. And I'm not saying that sometimes we don't get tired. But the battle is the Lord's. We can't give in. We can't stop. God has not called you to the ministry and then he tells you, okay, you've done enough, it's time to give out. That's not God. If Jesus had not given up on us, where would we be today? But Elijah kept saying, now Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Mm. 
But God allowed him to stay there. Not only did he stay there, God sent him. He said, because you're going to need some nourishment. Because you know why? Because God wasn't going to let him go. God was not going to let him give up. Even though we feel in our flesh that we are weak, it's when we're weak, the word said, God is strong. So he said, rest, <laughs> sleep, don't even worry about it. So he let him eat and drink and lay down and rest his body. The spirit needs to be fed, and the body needs to be fed also. Do not forget these matters. It seems that some people that I ought not to mention such small things as food and rest, but if we don't have the right nourishment for the body, thank you, Deborah. If we don't have the right nourishment for the body, we can't do the things God wants us to do. Amen. We can't be in the places that God needs us to be. But he has to understand that he was going to send him on a journey. And he's going to wander for 40 Thank you. And he needed to be fed. So God said, rest. But the great thing about that, God said, he was taking care of Elijah because he still had work for Elijah to do. That meant that God had compassion on Elijah. Because it was like he was denying God after he just told everybody that he was God, but God still had compassion to see him through. God is always teaching us that he can be the God of our generation and the generation to come. We can't say, well, the kids of this generation don't want God. We can't say that because there are children in this generation that's preaching the gospel. There are children in this generation that's living for God. So we can't say this generation is canceled out. We're not going to give the enemy that much credit Amen. because we know the God that we serve. Amen. But Elijah said one thing again. He said, I am the only prophet that is left. Down in 11 it says, then he said, go out and stand in the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And then after that, after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. How many of y'all heard that still, small voice? When you needed God the most, and he whispered the answer that you need. God said, get up. Go stand in front of the mountain. Stand before the Lord. God knew what the depressed and the discouraged Elijah needed. He needed a personal encounter with God. There was nothing fu fundamentally wrong with Elijah's theology, but at the time, there was something lacking in his experience. Sometimes we need to come to God. Sometimes it's not going to the pastor or the preacher or the teacher. Sometimes we need God to speak to us, to give us a revelation that keeps us moving. So God passed by. And then most of the things we think sometimes when the earthquake quite happens, it's God. Or, or when the storms come, it's God trying to teach us something. Or, or when the fires break out, it's God trying to show us something. But the word says right here, God was in none of that. But he came in a still, small voice. Because he needed Elijah to know that it was him. After the still small voice came, Elijah still wanted to say, but I'm the only one, God. I I'm the only one of your servants that's left. And God says to him, I have 7,000 that have not bowed down. So it's not like you're in this thing by yourself. But we're supposed to be workers one to the other. Elijah just needed to know that not only was God in the small voice and God was with him, but that he had those that was working with him, standing with him, and still believing God. This mighty man of God, this man that stood on Mount Carol and called fire down from heaven, 
When God told him that I retained 7,000 faithful souls, this stirred up something in Elijah because God wasn't through with him yet. Just like God is not through with you yet. Just when you think you're on this road by yourself, Amen. God says, I have thousands upon thousands upon thousands that has not bowed down yet. I have thousands upon thousands of faithful people that know who I am that understands the question that I am God. I am that I am. Praise God. It showed Elijah that his quiet ministry over the years actually bore more fruit than he thought. So it's quick for us to say, I, I don't think I'm doing anything in the ministry. But you don't know who God has out there that needs to hear from you. Who is God has placed in your life. Who's God have you praying for so that their soul will not die and go to hell? Some that have watched you so closely over the years and because of your life have changed their life and came over to God. Elijah needs to know that his ministry, although he thought it was quiet, was actually spectacular. Certainly not Elijah's impressive demonstration on top of my Carmel, for they were loyal to the Lord before that. That still small voice had been going through all of Israel because of Elijah. Because they knew the works that Elijah had done. And God said to him, it's no time to give up. He's saying today to you, it's no time to give up. You may be tired. You may be weary. But God, in the time when you least think he's going to show up, he's going to show up in that still, small voice. And, 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 and sometimes he's going to show up when you don't even know he's there. And I'm going to share something in my closing that my granddaughter allowed me to share. Some of y'all heard on the news last week, last Saturday, that there was a shooting in Cornell. And most of y'all know that that's my hometown. So about 11, 11.30 Saturday night, my daughter calls me. And of course, I'm thinking one thing, and she's talking to me on the phone, and I'm thinking, is she trying to pull my leg? You know, is she trying to get me, you know, reared up and then said it's just a joke. But she said, Mama, we was in this restaurant and this man came in and he started shooting. And I'm like, what? What? What is it? She said, Mama, we didn't know what was going on. We heard the gunshots. And she said, and we were just about to leave and one of our friends came in and we started talking. So when the, when the shots started happening, we wasn't sure what they were. And, and, and so he said, get down, get up under the table. And she said, in the section that I was, because there's a wall that splits the restaurant and, and they were on this side and, and the, the shooting started on the opposite side. And so everybody hits the floor wondering what's next. And, and, and on this side of the restaurant, the man shoots three people. And then all of a sudden, they say the man shows up in the area where they are. She said everybody was quiet. Nobody, of course, wanted to say anything. But she said on the Two feet on the right hand side of her was the other man he was looking for. And he started shooting right in front of them. Right in front of them, the man hits the floor. And if that wasn't enough, the shooter comes back and he shoots him again. So all this time, there's a one side full of people where the other side had ran out. And by the grace of God, the word of God came to me that night and it said, God will never have you in a place, the word says, where there is not a way of escape. 
So my daughter says to my granddaughter and her friends, there's an exit sign. When I say run, we're going to run. So at this time, the shooter was walking in the back part of the restaurant and the kitchen part of swimming and trying to find a way out. So when they hit the door running, everybody else followed them out. And all I kept thinking of was, God, how do you continue to protect my children? How do you continue to take care of us? So, so when I read this about Elijah, and then the word says, if your God be God, then you follow him. Mm -hmm. But if my God be God, then you follow him. There is no other place to go. Yahweh, Jehovah, he's God. And there is no other. So I started rejoicing while I was lying down there. I just kept thinking about the goodness of God and how we, we pray for people to be saved and God sees salvation come. Or we pray for people to be healed and healing comes. And we pray for people to be delivered. And then we do like Elijah and we slump back in fear. But today, if God be God, serve God. There is no other. That's just another testimony of the goodness of God in my life. How somebody took me for my children, God spared their life. Again. Again. Oh, I got stories, but I'm not going to tell them. He's done it again. So when the song says, believe for it, I believe God. You said it. I believe it. That settles it. There's no more time for wavering. I don't wonder anymore if God, God, I know that he's God. I know that he's God. And Elijah knows that he's God too. Because the Bible goes on and says, after Elijah had went through that moment of depression, had went through that slight moment of doubt, God just killed me. The Bible says that God takes Elijah up. That he does not see Death. Yes. Yes. God. That God loved him so much, even after his moment of concern. Kind of like God did David. He's a man after my own heart. See, grace comes, so it doesn't matter. You may slip, you may err, you may fall, you may backslide, but God loves you enough that he will reach down and pick you up. And he will take you on to heaven. So it's not a time to give up on God. Matters right now is a time to run to God. And wait on that still small voice. To answer your prayer. I thank you. I thank you God for the revelation. I thank you Lord God for the opportunity. I thank you Lord God that you are closer. You are closer today than you've ever been. We choose you, God. We choose you, God. No devil in hell was going to stop us. We're not going to worry about fear and unbelief because we know that you help our unbelief. We're going to stand on your word and we're going to go and we're going to do that that you have called us to do. And no Jezebel spirit will tear up this house because we're stronger than any spirit of the enemy. We bless your name today, God. And I bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen.